from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Dell EMC World 2017. Brought to you by Dell EMC. Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE, special coverage of Dell EMC World 2017. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. This is our eighth year of covering EMC World, but now called Dell EMC World. I'm John Furrier, your co-host on our set one, and with my co-host Paul Gillen this week, as well as Keith Townsend and John Walls and Rebecca Knight on set two. Double barrel shotgun of content here at Dell EMC World in the Cube. Uh, thanks for joining us for three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Paul, so much to talk about here this week. Um, digital transformation, a little bit boring theme has been being played out in real time, but this is a historic moment because, one, the Cube started at EMC World in 2010, eight years ago, but this is the first official EMC World where it's Dell EMC World. They had kind of a mini event in Austin, but since Michael Dell took over, or I'm sorry, merger of equals, a combination. Combination, as they call combination. it. Combination. Um, this is the first instantiation of EMC World as Dell EMC World. Jeremy Burton, now the CMO of the Dell Technologies, which is the uh, holding company for all the companies. It's the same EMC World flair. Now the integrated content, um, notable absent CUBE alumni and executives from EMC. We'll talk about that in the EMC Mafia segment uh, shortly, but <laughs> your thoughts, because now Michael Dell's putting the rubber to the road. Kind of nothing earth shattering in his keynote, but certainly private company, all guns blaring, smiling and dialing. He's got the swagger on stage. Well, Michael is nothing if not an optimist. He's always good at, at seeing a brighter future. And at his keynote this morning, as you said, it was uh, blissfully free of content, uh, but it did talk a lot about digital transformation, which is, of course, the, the buzzword of the year in the IT industry. I'm a little surprised that Dell adopted the buzzword, the same buzzword that HP and Cisco and all these, these other big companies are adopting. Um, I, I don't think the keynote, what happened in the keynote is less interesting really than, than how the, the mood changes here. And this is the first, this is the coming out party for Dell EMC. Yeah, there was a, uh, a conference last October, a month after the merger, but this is really, things have finally, uh, have finally settled out now, six months later, and it's a chance for customers and for the partners to get a sense of how well this is all working out. And one of the things I'm watching is how the story's unfolding, because now you're starting to see the big companies, certainly in the consolidation side of the business market of infrastructure and data center and I, enterprise IT, it's a consolidating mature market. It is transforming, there is a cloud story requirement, there are new software requirements, software defined data center, as well as new growth opportunities. So what I'm looking at is, what is the story? What is Michael packaging? And how does that compare to the competition? We're going to hear from HPE and HP e Discover coming up. We'll be covering that for the seventh consecutive year. Um, we're seeing Amazon story playing out in real time. Oracle story. Everyone's got their story. And it's certainly digital transformation, but what's interesting is Michael's got the packaging. He's packaging it up. Your thoughts? And Michael kind of dissed the cloud this morning, actually, in his presentation. He said, you can't have a successful business, or your business is not going to grow as quickly if you're 100% cloud-based. So he was make, very much making a pitch for, uh, for a data center infrastructure. Really not surprising coming from Michael. One thing I, I, we want to, there'll be a sub-theme here, I think, is how this merger is working out. And as we wrote on Silicon Angle this week, you know, if you go back to the history of big mega mergers, particularly in the hardware industry, going back to Burroughs Sperry, DEC Compaq, uh, HP Compaq, uh, Wellfleet Synoptics, and uh, NCR at and I mean, it goes on and on and on. Pretty much all disasters. And we really haven't seen a merger anywhere near this scale between two IT companies that has, that has worked well. Uh, all indications are right now that, that they're doing the right things. They have, even have some people on board with um, Dell EMC who went through some of those mergers. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see how they break a, a pattern that has been decidedly negative. What a great point. I love your post, by the way. And I would add that interesting observation, at least from my perspective, is as I, we sit down with these billionaires and interview them one-on-one -on, -one on the Cube, is you look at Amazon, Andy Jassy and Jeff Bezos, Bezos in particular, Larry Ellison, and Michael Dell, you have essentially captains of industry at the helm. Michael Dell is no spring chicken, but he's also not over the hill either. He's 51 years old. He's a kid relative to most kid. of the leaders he, in this industry. You, know, you hear Jeff Bezos talk, and I was watching um, his talk in DC just this week. He's saying, we're taking the long view. So if you look at Amazon.com CEO Bezos, 
look at Michael Dell, look at what Ellison's doing. They're all playing the long game card. Now, I don't know if that's a hedge against we don't have our story right or give us more time to bake out our stuff, but I think what's different about Dell Technologies is Michael's 33 years into the business, one trillion dollars later in, in, in sales, and he's young, so I think that is a wild card. Ellison's still running the show, Bezos is still running the show, Dell's certain running the show. So I think the wild card on this is the fact that you've got a strong founder and a privately held company. Uh, and Ellison, uh, it's questionable how long Ellison will be able to run the show. I mean, he is over 70 at this point. Uh, Dell, Dell certainly is, will be around for a long time. Uh, the, um, uh, you have to take a long-term strategy. If you're not Amazon, you have to take a long-term strategy because what, what other choice do you have? I mean, you've lost in the short term. So it's not surprising to hear these guys uh, going that way. I'll be interested to hear from Michael and from his team about the cloud and how they really uh, design a differentiated strategy. I think IBM has, has staked its, its position in cloud out pretty well. I think even HPE is, has, done a, uh, has got a differentiated position. Uh, HP, of course, has the the uh, the uh, configurable hardware. Uh, that's a, a point that I think Dell has to come back on. And the big question is software. Yeah. You know, John, as you pointed out the other day, VMware is worth more than HPE by a substantial margin at this point. So they've got this this huge uh, asset in VMware, not to mention uh, VirtuStream and um, and Pivotal and and the other uh, good software assets they they acquired. What are they going to do with them? How are they, are they just going to let them go free? like Michael has done in the past, or are they going to try to, to mold these into some sort of coordinated whole? Well, great point. One is, um, on the HPE valuation thing, market cap, VMware's actually worth more on market cap and public markets than HPE. Interesting, but not significant in my mind yet, but it does point to the fact that Michael Dell's rhetoric on stage today, he didn't take any shots at HP. Last year, he took a big shot at HPE. He's been his rival from day one. I used to work at HP when he was just a mail order company selling white boxes, and then he grew that business. Obviously, the rest is history, but no shot at HP because VMware has to work with HP, right? So, so that's interesting. Two is on the software side, Dell is a hardware company, let's face it. But they have more software now than they've ever had before. So that is a good point. We're going to be getting into this data, software defined data center to find out how much they actually have. A couple core themes that I see already popping out of the keynote. One, Pivotal. Pivotal and Cloud Foundry is instrumental in the, in the keynotes. NSX was mentioned, Pat Gelsinger is going to be on tomorrow. NSX is VMware's secret play. If you look at what NSX is doing with the Amazon public cloud deal that they did recently this year, NX, NSX could be the real lever in that intellectual property, that lock-in, that kind of differentiation. Um, the cloud is not a place, it's a way of doing IT is another message we heard all day today. Yep. To me, and, and your point about bashing cloud, I just think that's a, a stake in the ground to kind of hold the line because they have no cloud strategy. Now their cloud strategy is kind of hand-waving right now with multi-cloud, which I buy, but multi-cloud is still a fantasy in my mind. Latencies are too low, there just isn't the kind of plumbing yet in place on the clouds for multi-cloud, but certainly hybrid cloud I think will be multi-cloud uh, role. So you know, those are the key things. And then I'm going to ask Michael directly, you blew $60 billion on this deal, is there any cash left for M&A? Acquisitions, yeah. Exactly. M&A right now is hot market, you can do some nice tuck-ins, fill in the white spaces on the products, get those software assets, and really start cobbling together a growth strategy. There's no doubt in my mind, Paul, that they're going to win the mature, classic business school move of consolidated market. Own the consolidated market, and try to get a growth strategy. So to me, that's going to be the big question. What is Dell Technologies? and Dell EMC's growth strategy. And you would have to think it's either through M&A, perhaps an acquisition of HPE if the valuation continues to go down, uh, or it's in, it's, in stra it's in software. And it's a good point you made about VMware. VMware also has a strategic alliance with IBM. So if you're, if you're Michael Dell, it's hard to give a compelling keynote speech, speech these days because you can't really offend anybody. His, his uh, companies now are in, are in cahoots with, with all these other firms, and of course, uh, dissing the cloud is even dangerous because Cloud Foundry is such a, a critical part of the pivotal strategy. So I think you're, uh, it's an important point. You've got a, a company that is almost trying to reassemble the old IBM, the old IBM of the 80s which dominated every, every, every segment that was important. Uh, 
Dell is almost doing that now. I mean, the only piece they really don't have is networking. So, uh, are they going to go to make a big play to become the you know the, the Mongo uh, uh, IT company in the world? Uh, and can they raise the the kind of funds for that? Yeah, and we're also going to talk about the cloud um, transition as well as the, what I'm calling the EMC mafia, folks that have been on the cube and big executives at EMC. We'll get to that in, in, in a minute. But I just want to talk about that cloud play because you're right. The growth strategy has to come from software. I just don't see the cloud growth yet for these guys. Although Michael and the hallway conversations are, growth in the cloud is really doing really well for EMC. Not sure, but on the growth strategy, Pivotal, Boomi, VMware, Virtual Stream, and software converged infrastructure are interesting plays. So I think that's where we have to look here. I still think there's a lot of holes in the product line. So to me, that's important. Now, trends so far, and what we're expecting to hear at the show is, some of my notes, Paul, I'll share with you, and, and love to get your reaction on. Um, all flash arrays are going to be big, continuing to grow that. Um, Hyperconverge VX Rail, we heard that on stage today, claiming to be number one. Power Edge 14G, again, back to speeds and feeds. <laughs> you know, storage. Storage is the bread and butter of EMC, and now Dell EMC, it, I still think is going to be a real critical beachhead that they're going to continue to expand. Storage is not going away. Obviously the Isilon All Flash is coming out, and then SSD, data protection in the cloud. You start to see them going where their roots are. Cloud stuff is coming out of the data domain, kind of their core storage first, makes sense strategy-wise while they buy their time to fill in the cloud. Uh, well, it's a good point about storage. They have a comfortable lead in storage. According to the latest IDC figures, they're a good 15 points ahead of their next biggest competitor. They have a comfortable lead in hyper-converged hyper infrastructure. Uh, four different product lines in that area. Uh, these are, these are, are beachheads that they have to shore up. They have to be sure that their market share doesn't erode in those areas. The question is, where does the growth come from? You look at, at uh, a company that's going through a very similar transition right now, Cisco, which is, uh, has, has finally really uh, bought in to software-defined networking and is remaking its company around it. Uh, that company is, is having to change the whole culture uh, in response to a technology trend. Now, the same thing's going on in the data center. Everything is being remade as uh, 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 virtualized, and VMware is, the, is at the center of that. So, Michael yeah. Dell has the, the asset to be able to, to lead that, uh, that uh, uh, conversion, Great. but is, is that, are they, they psychologically going to get there? Great point. One, I would agree with you that the whole Cisco example proves the same challenge with Dell EMC is, can they move up the stack? In this case, they're hardware guys. Can they add software? Cisco, they're transforming themselves to be more cloud native. The classic move's happening. Cisco's been trying to move up the stack for over a generation. They're plumbing guys, they're networking guys. These guys are hardware guys. Can they get the DNA? to truly become software providers, not in the sense of selling software, just providing a software fabric that's going to be the key differentiators. Because digital transformation is about IT transformation. That is certainly the reality what we're seeing when you start to peel back the onions. And that to me is going to be the big, the big discussion because as David Goulden said on stage, apps provide the value. As the enterprises build more apps, you got to have a platform, you got to have a cohesive, horizontal, end-to-end -end software fabric. And the question is, do they have it? Uh, well, they certainly have the foundation for it. I mean, they have Pivotal. They have the, the there's a whole developer community around Pivotal. Dell itself doesn't have a developer community, nor does EMC. But they have elements of that uh, to build upon. The um, uh, the, the interesting thing about the, the conversion to, to uh, software, about software-defined infrastructure, is that it requires thinking from an application perspective. And that's not something hardware companies have ever been inclined to do. So uh, how does Michael Dell make that transition? Has he made, that, made it himself? Uh, is there other leadership he's going to have to bring in who are going to make it for him? The whole leadership of the Dell EMC company right now is ex-Dell and, ex and EMC people. It's hardware well, we're gonna, guys. I'm going to put pressure on Dell on the question on software, but you wrote a post uh, two-part series on siliconangle.com, worth checking out, getting a lot, of, a lot of viral buzz around open source and the value of open source, because if you look at, say, Cisco, for instance, what they're doing with the cloud native strategy, they have actually pivoted, and Chuck Robbins, the CEO, has acknowledged, actually retweeted one of my tweets the other day with, as we were talking about this new program called DevNet Create. They're taking the developer program from Cisco and moving it into an open community model, which basically is a toe in the water for saying, we have to figure out open source. All the critical big vendors that are transforming from the, call the old guard, as Amazon calls them, Amazon Web Services, Andy Jassy, Dell's an old guard guy, but still young, but they got to get to open source. What are you finding is the success parameters here? Because you got to play in the open source 
be a contributing member, again, back to the DNA of the culture, and two, there's real value there. Well, there's no question that open source has won when it comes to infrastructure. I mean, the biggest IT companies in the world, which are Google and Facebook, are both built on open source platforms. I mean, you know, game over. Uh, this is where IT infrastructure is headed. Cisco, interesting case, because they are an infrastructure company, and they are being eroded, their, their uh, traditional market is being eroded by open source. They have chosen to embrace it yeah. through their developer community. Uh, I don't think any company, uh, I, I, Cisco is one company I would never bet against. They just, they're such a, yeah. a great company. If anyone's going to make the transition, uh, they will. Uh, open source is still an infrastructure play. I don't see open source in the applications area being, being a major driver, but, but Dell is an infrastructure company, so you have to assume that everything they're doing in, in, uh, in managing, in securing, uh, storage and servers is going to be under pressure from open source at some point. They have to embrace that as, as Cisco is doing. Paul, we had a, a thought leader chat with some experts on our digital panel software, CrowdChat, everyone knows CrowdChat.net, check it out. And comment and conversation was taking place among the influential folks saying, what is a software company? And you go back to the web, shrink-wrapped, download software, to now fully SaaS-based and platform, SaaS now platform, what is a software company? So the question was, is Facebook a software company? Or are they an app company? Which begs the question, you have to be a software company, but it's not the classic software company category, business model. You need software <laughs> to run stuff. So you can be a hardware guy like Michael, Michael Dell and have Dell Technologies. You can be a networking company like Cisco, but you got to be a software company in the new way. Well, I spoke to a Forrester analyst in, in, in writing that piece on open source who, who had a great point. He said, uh, uh, Facebook and Google are the two big, are, are two big successful software companies, neither of which makes any money. Uh, any money, a little bit in Google's case, licensing software. So they created business models that have nothing to do with the traditional software model, uh, that, that have, but that have leveraged their expertise in the software that they've developed. And maybe that is the business model, going yeah. ultimately the business model is, is, is building software in order to do something else with it that, that customers will pay for. I think you're onto something, I think your post illuminates that. I think that this is going to be one of those things where in the history books of the tech generation, as we're on our whatever wave of open source generation, this is it, it's not about the business model of the software, it's how the software is being used in the business model of the transformation. That is really, really key. Paul, I want to just talk about really quickly about to my observation at EMC, we're a little bit of editorial uh, moment here, because Dell took over, uh, Dell EMC. We've interviewed now eight years, pretty much all the executives at EMC over the years, but there's an EMC mafia developing. There's a lot of people who have left EMC that we know we're friends with, Guy Churchwood, C.J. Desai, Josh Kahn, Rich DiPalatano, Brian Gallagher, B.J. Jenkins, Sanjay Merchandani, and many more have left because of the consolidation. Certainly you can't, EMC's going to get consolidated down, but no major layoffs, but still enough that some eagles have flown from the nest, as they say, and are running other companies. So you have this EMC culture out there, a very sales-oriented, very customer-centric, now running other companies, and I want to give a shout out to all those EMC alumni and mafia out there. Uh, good luck on your new ventures, but the impact here to Dell is a mashup of the two cultures. What's your observation? What's your reaction of that? I mean, have you heard anything? I mean, I have some thoughts, but I want to get your reaction because, okay, some eagles fly away, you still got the worker bees inside EMC, and now Dell coming together. Thoughts on the culture clash? Well, I, I live in Boston, and uh, so I've been through uh, the acquisition of a prime computer, through uh, EMC acquiring, uh, acquiring uh, Data General, through the DEC acquisition by Compaq, uh, all of which were disasters, and all of which were, were uh, culturally, uh, were, were the cultural issues were much bigger than the technology issues. So I think that that is, uh, that is something that, that Dell ha has to be front and center for Michael Dell, is how do you mash up these two cultures? As you pointed out, EMC, very aggressive, take no prisoners, uh, enterprise oriented sales force, their sales, sales people make a lot of money. I used to live in a neighborhood where <laughs> everyone was, it was EMC. Buying new houses. People. They were making a million dollars a year. <laughs> so, and, you've, and you've got Dell with its direct model, with its channel model, and without a particularly uh, strong roots in an enterprise sales force. So how do you, 
coordinate those. It's not surprising to see people leaving, of course, in the early days after an acquisition, choices get made, people get promoted and moved in new positions. Those who lose out tend to, tend to leave the company. But uh, I think the sales issue would be something to delve into, too. How do you, does, does e Dell want to adopt EMC sales style or, or the other way around? Uh, or is there some way that they can live both in harmony? You know, I, f I, I follow a lot of companies in Silicon Valley as well. I'm out there on the west coast, left coast, as they say, um, <laughs> where all the crazy ones are, as they say. But I got to say, I mean, I got to say, there's been some shrinkage on EMC, but for the most part, I haven't really heard any really negative horror stories. I've heard, um, actually, it's been going pretty well. And I think you, you bring up a, an issue of effectiveness with the sales folks. Dell's an efficiency guy, right? So you got effectiveness and efficiency coming together. But I think they've handled it well. I really haven't heard any real horror stories. Again, I think that has to do with the founder being actively involved. They're a private company, um, so they have some room. And I think they've invested in, in making that happen. So I think generally, um, props to uh, EMC folks and for the Dell folks on the acquisition, still not clear the woods yet, it's going to surely be in the products and the, the revenue, but for the most part, we're going to unpack that. So Paul. But, but you, you can't, I just want to jump in just quickly, you can't minimize customer touch. And EMC was always a high touch company. Outstanding service, they put, they put people on, the, on a plane and you know, in the middle of the night, a charter a private jet in the middle of the night to get someone on site at a customer to fix a problem. Uh, as you mentioned, Dell is an efficiency company. You know, that's not a very efficient way to operate. Uh, can, they, can they absorb the best of EMC and the best of Dell at the same time? Yeah, well we'll certainly tell. I mean, they got a lot of competition. Michael Dell saying on stage, they're going to compete with startups. Essentially what he's saying is Amazon uh, there, in my opinion, though, although that's not probably what he really meant, but that's my interpretation. But I'm expecting to, to see the same old EMC world with a twist, and that is, we're doing good, the messaging's out there, um, we're going to see how the products compare vis-a-vis -vis the competition. I'm interested in VMware piece. Paul, what are you looking forward to? Uh, I'm looking forward to, to hearing how this is all going, how, how this company is culturally, what kind of a cultural chimera they're putting together here that, that's going to make sense that the market is, is going to understand. I also want to hear how they're going to differentiate in cloud, uh, Internet of Things, we just heard a little bit about that this morning. Uh, that's something where uh, I think you're seeing Cisco, uh, the way Cisco is dealing with the cloud these days is to say, don't worry about it, it's all going IOT. It's all going to distributed intelligent devices. The cloud is already history, is what they're saying. So does Dell have a, a similar differentiated position uh, on, on that? I'm least interested in hearing about the new products because you know it's it speeds and feeds. But really, how is this company going to, going to dominate an industry? How, how is it going to get over some of the speed bumps that we've been talking about for the last 20 minutes that have foiled so many merger attempts in the past? One of the tell signs that I look at a conference when I see a lot of AI washing. The good news is there's not a lot of AI being talked about here. It's usually that's just lipstick on the pig, as they say. Um, I would, except for the case of Google and Amazon Web Services, they do have some AI story with some real props to back it up. For the most part, you're not seeing EMC glob on the whole machine learning rah-rah. They did talk about it, but it wasn't like a big theme. I think they really talked about the packaging of the value of the brands together, uh, comments around it costs for public cloud, nice little ding there. I'm going to dig into the story. I'm going to really test the story. And I'm going to look at the customer traction. I really want to see who they have on stage. I really want to hear who's really going down the road, how that growth strategy, because I think they're going to win the data center consolidation market pretty handily. And the question between HPE and Dell, for instance, because that's really the, to me, the two big horses on the track. Who's going to win the growth? Who's going to be able to lock in their beachhead on the core market, traditional market, and have access to the growth of what cloud will bring, and IOT, and among other things? I think at this point, HPE has a better story in that area with their, their configurable uh, infrastructure, with their pay-as-you-go on-site model, really interesting uh, models. Uh, I, I was at HPE uh, World in, in Europe uh, in December, and, and I came away from that feeling like, these guys have some, some unique talking points here. Uh, so they at least, they have a strategy that I think I understand and that it's different. You know, Dell is still working through a, this, this huge merger. See, look at the bottom line, the bottom line is Dave Donatelli, who's an executive at Oracle, told me he's also an EMC executive and HPE, the business of provisioning servers and storage is not going to be the growth strategy. Right. Now it might be a component of the overall business model, like software, 
but ultimately that business is in decline, and that's a fact. Okay, this is theCUBE bringing you all the coverage of the kickoff from day one at Dell EMC World 2017, our eighth year. Three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We have two sets, the blue set and the white set. Go to siliconangle.tv to find the coverage. Also go to on Twitter, follow us on theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Paul Gillen. Kicking off Ian, Dell EMC World 2017. We'll be back with more. Stay with us after this short break. <laughs>